Oh, no. No, so part two for today. We just did a quick little turnaround lesson and uh, something uh, that a couple of people have asked me about recently um, <clears throat> is playing different inversions. So this is kind of part, we did, a, or I did a uh, lesson a few months back about using inversions and um, over like a 2-5-1 progression or 6 two, five or whatever it was. But this is going to be uh, one, it's basically a harmonized scale. So you can basically kind of get the idea of how to use number one, these new chord shapes. Some of them probably aren't new to you, but, but just use them in different ways. And if you're not familiar, <coughs> pardon me, with the concept of um, of how to use a harmonized scale, this might be a nice little introduction while we're doing it. So we'll try to kill a couple of words of one stone. Um, if I'm assuming we're all familiar with the major scale and how it relates to music and how to use it. Alright, that's an E. So we have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, E flat. Now, if we were to make chords out of those, it would sound like this. Up the octave. So you, the general rule of thumb, for want of a better word, is you have a major, your second degree of the scale, which is F sharp, is a minor, your second, your third is a minor, your fourth is major, your fifth is a seventh, your sixth, which is also your relative minor, is not obviously a minor, you have a diminish, and then back to your root, an octave, but an octave higher. So, using that, um, if you're playing something in E, you know, and, and those are, let's just say, good choices to make. You know, there's no rules, of course, but... Sort of thing. And dicking around with that and making music. Um, so, another good thing you can kind of do with that is is that's fine and dandy to use bar chords and things like that but you can also use different inversions to give yourself kind of different flavors I guess and different registers in the neck depending on the sound you're going for depending on who you're playing with depending on where in the mix you sit and what needs what space needs to be filled and and just your musical taste so um well you're going to use uh this is going to be a major seventh but you can apply this to major voices, you can use it, apply it to sevenths, minors, minor six, whatever you like, basically. But we're going to start with the major seven. Okay, so it'll sound like this. Pretty, a little loungy, but kind of pretty, you know. So the first grip, we're going to be in the second position. Where uh, your index finger is going to be on the um, shag it. Your index finger is going to be on the D string on the fourth fret. Then you're going to bar with your pinky off on the E, the B, and the G string on the fourth fret. Got that? Your second position, or your F sharp minor, is going to be this grip. Now this is a minor grip. These are all kind of good to know. And you can use them wherever you like, whenever you like. You don't have to use, just use them in this context. So your F sharp minor is going to play the root here on the fourth string on the fourth fret. Your pinky is going to play the um, C sharp on the uh, sixth fret on the third string. Your ring finger is going to come on the fifth fret on the B string. Your ring finger is going to play, your middle finger. I'm sorry. <laughs> your ring finger is going to come on the fifth string, the fifth fret first string. Sorry. So that you get something like that. Now all you got to do for the three, which is also a minor, is move it up two frets. Now you have a either an A flat or a G sharp minor, depending on how you want to look at it. So now we have this. Now we're going to go up a semitone to the seventh position, 
and play that first shape again, that first major seventh shape. So that's going to be your A, that's going to be an A major seven. Okay, now we move up to, that's the four, so now we move up to the five. <clears throat> That is going to be this awesome little uh, seventh grip, which I use the living hell out of. I love it. <coughs> so it's the uh, ninth position with your index finger. Your ring finger is going to come down on the 11th fret on the G string. Your middle finger is going to play the 10th fret on the B string. Your pinky is going to play the E flat here on the 11th fret on the high E string. So now we have this. Go two frets higher and use our minor grip in the 11th position. So that'll be 11, 13, 12, 12 for our C sharp minor. This isn't really a diminished so much. It's like some fermented cemented chord. I, I, I haven't even bothered to learn what the hell it is, to tell you the truth. But it's like in place of the diminished. On So you're playing, uh, I wonder if it's some kind of. Oh, it doesn't matter what, even what the hell it is. You'll, you'll use your ears, you'll hear it. It's an E flat on the uh, fourth string on the 13th fret. Then with your index finger, you're going to bar off the G string, the B string, the E string. And then an octave higher from down here, we're going to play that major seventh grip for our eighth or octave. And that's going to be on the starting on the fourth string. You're going to play your 14th fret. Then on the third fret, it's going to be the 16th, 16th, and 16th. Descending will sound like this. Now, which is fine as just to play a scale and to kind of get it in your ear and things like that and get it on your fingers. But the cool thing comes when you come to actually use it and put and put it into different things. And you can do all sorts of things to practice this. I mean, you can just tap your foot and play different chord rhythms and things like that. Uh, and mix them up with different chord voicings. You can try finger picking them. I mean, use your imagination. Anyway, so once you kind of get that under your fingers, so instead of playing <clears throat> like an A major here, substitute in that A major 7th there, see how it sounds. You can play your B7 there, but you also play your B7 right there. Instead of playing your big old E chord there, you can play one here. Um, so it just gives you kind of different options and, and, and different, uh, to use a cooking term, flavor, I suppose. Anyway, um, and, and move them into different keys too and, and, and just experiment and substitute. And now you've got like a whole new set of chords to play with. Anyway, um, I'm going to go have another cup of coffee now and smoke. Uh, you have a lovely day now.